there was a lot of interest expressed for the T7 hard drive case featured in one of our shorts. So we took some time to make some design adjustments, in particular, adding some features to improve dust sealing. Some of it is apparent here, where the top surface of the main shell makes contact with the lid. Our first prototype also had the main hinge incorporated as part of the main shell. Initially, that seemed like the most intuitive and efficient way to set up the file for printing and minimize steps to assemble. Which, of course, immediately broke when I tried to open the lid for the first time after bolting it on. So I knew we needed to figure out a way to orient the layers, so it prevented that from happening. That area was redesigned as two pieces, with the shell as one part printed bottom to top, and the hinge as an insert printed sideways. This way. The walls of the hinge cavities can be printed with continuous rings, and the normal forces acting on the hinge aren't directly challenging layer adhesion. This project was also designed to use heat set inserts to facilitate disassembly and repair without compromising integrity. These were paired with countersunk screws to give the piece a more refined and finished look, and plastic washers to help ensure smooth rotation of the hinges. Externally, it remains relatively unchanged, but there have been significant changes made to where the parts interface. The main shell body uses about 105 grams of filament, while the rest of the parts collectively used just over 60 grams of filament. In Shaper 3D, we output a plan view of the case at actual size in PDF format. Using a vector editing program, such as Illustrator, the PDF can then be used to create graphics that accurately fit the panels and facets of the piece. And because the images of the model surfaces were output at one-to-one, -one, it's a lot easier to tailor your design to work with any physical details that may be present. To get the best possible results when using the laser on your prints, it's always a good idea to run a test plate to find out the range of effect you can achieve, and the optimal settings to get the sharpest, highest contrast lines. In fact, you may want to do a test like this before you commit to printing a part using a specific filament. For our test graphics here, each of the major sections rendered with the engraving function were also outlined with the score function. This gives the edges a much crisper look. Since many of the fastener holes needed to be printed perpendicular to the build plate, they required a bit of cleanup prior to assembly. The cleanup also made it easier to pre-fit the heat set inserts to ensure they were level before applying the heat and pressure with the press. For the lid, it was an M3 insert that was used. The groove in the upper seal has been modeled to fit one millimeter rubber cord that acts as a compression gasket. It takes a bit of care and patience to get it in there, but once it's in there, it should stay put. We started on one end, then gradually worked our way around. A small flat plastic tool can help to push the cord into the groove. Avoid using any sharp metal tools, such as a screwdriver, to avoid marring or nicking the cord. You can probably print a small, 1 to 1.5 millimeter flat stick, then just round the edges of one end with a nail file or emery board. Once you've gotten all the way around back to the other end, the trick is to cut the cord so that there is no gap between the ends. I apparently haven't done a great job here, but my advice is to start with a bit of overlap, then trim small amounts, and repeatedly check fit until you're happy with the result. Remember to continue to make sure that the rest of the cord is properly seated in the rest of the groove, before trimming any additional cord. Just like the lid, the main shell also uses an M3 heat set insert. Assuming that you've made the hole for the insert just big enough, using something flat can help snap the insert into place, and at the right angle for the press to come into proper contact.
Remember not to push down too far with the press. This can't be undone. I probably pushed a bit too deep here, but luckily, it still worked. For the lower gasket, 2 mm hollow rubber cord was used. Because it's hollow, a small piece of the 1 mm cord can be used to connect the two ends together. Once installed, the cord acts as a crush gasket. The installation process is similar to the upper seal, but this one seemed a bit easier because the cord was much thicker and remains raised above the top surface of the base. Now, we do realize that we could most probably achieve a better seal and probably simplify and shorten the installation process if we just flattened out all the contact surfaces between the parts. But we wanted to see what we could come up with and how far we could get if we did our best to retain the parts of the original design that gave the piece its character and appeal. This is how we came up with the two different seal styles. Again, using the vector drawing output function in Shaper 3D, we imported the shapes of the internal tops of the base into Xtool Creative Space and cut foam pads to fit them. We also cut a second set to use in the lid. Using 3M heavy duty mounting tape, the pads were attached onto the surfaces that would be the top and bottom interior contact areas. All were made of 2 mm thick foam except for the bottom of the main cavity, which used 6 mm foam. You'll see me installing the heat set inserts here into the base after I put in the gasket, but in hindsight, it's probably wiser to do this before the gasket, so you don't risk nicking the gasket with the hot iron tip. The base and the hinge both use M4 heat set inserts. And here are the inserts going into the hinge spine. None of its sides are completely flat, so I used the yellow plastic stick to make sure it sat level as I pressed the insert for each side in. Those inserts stay hot for a little while, so be careful not to burn your fingers or lay them down on anything that can melt or get damaged then it's mostly just a matter of bolting everything together. Here's the hinge insert going in. Having the hinge insert as a separate part also leaves open the possibility of designing different lids. Maybe one that offers more vertical clearance, or perhaps one that has a slot for a label or if you want to change the pivot point for some reason. The plastic washers may be a tight fit, but once they're in there, they really help to eliminate torsional play in the hinges while still preventing the hinge from binding, even if slightly over-tightened. The M3 washers were probably one of the most frustrating things to install. They were either falling out, getting stuck, not sliding in, or not aligning with the part holes. The easiest way might be to put the case on its side with the chamfered hole facing up, balance the first washer on the latch's side already aligned, carefully position it in place without knocking it off, then sliding the screw through once you're sure all three things are aligned. Then you can try to get the second washer in between the latch and the main shell before pushing the screw all the way through. For some reason, 23mm M3 countersunk flathead hex sockets were hard to find. If you have the same experience, you can always get them in the 25mm length and cut or grind them down. Here's the completed unit. Again, it was built around Samsung's T7 Shield series, so it pretty much fits that exactly. Not sure how it would fit any other drives. The cable cavity doesn't fit much more than a 6-inch USB-C.
There is one more feature we've incorporated. Here's a keychain just to show which direction gravity is pulling. Yep, it sticks to walls. Well, metal ones anyway. We could only do this because the T7 is an SSD and not an old school mechanical drive. We've also been working on a version that has a slightly larger main cavity that uses hardware that gives it a bit of a different look. We wanted to find out if a hardware fastener set up like this would have any benefits over the original design, perhaps less prone to cracking after long-term use, or maybe effectively lifting the sides from direct contact with surfaces it's laid on would minimize scuffing. Well, that was our in-depth look at our T7 hard drive case exploration. You can download a parts list if you follow the link in the description, and as many of you have requested, the files are available in our store. Please like and subscribe to help us keep this going. And as always, let us know what you think and if you have any questions. We've also been working on getting a regular newsletter out, so you can sign up for that to get monthly updates, insights, and special deals. Till next time.